ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Pop Art Hunter channel. And today we've got an unbooking. <laughs> that may be a spoiler alert, but I think inside is a book because it is super heavy. And I don't usually order things this heavy in this sort of a box. I think it is a book. So let's take a book at the look or look at the book and we'll book a look at the look book. How much wood could a woodchuck? Anyway, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time. I'm just kidding. Let's go ahead and open it up, see what's inside. All righty, so I'm excited about this one. Hey, again, it's it's been a long time coming. Cheesh! If you can see what's in here, then you know. Then if you can't see it, then you don't. <laughs> oh baby, oh baby! <laughs> it's been a long time a coming. They wrapped it very well, and the bubble wrap it's strong with this one. It's a heavy. Look. Oh, look at that. Rad plastic. Yeah, rad plastic. And what I like about this right off the bat, there's no book cover. One of the things I really struggle with with books sometimes is when they have that cover, that paper is so easily damaged. And yeah, this is just the book itself. Yeah, it's the book itself, Rad Plastic. This is a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle book. And a lot of times, uh, you know, I have uh, vintage team and tea stuff that I unbox and stuff. And this is typically, you know, something I would put on that channel because it's team and tea. But this is a work of freaking art. And there's a lot of art within inside it as well. And, oh, and we got, oh, look at this. And should we have a little autographed sticker? It's from the book author. Yeah, a little uh, yeah, autograph right there. It's, that's so nice. Okay, I'm just looking up here. I'm kind of curious um, because I did buy I did buy this book as a second edition. Yeah, but I don't believe there's an edition number. I'm not sure if this was how the self-publishing or the publishing worked for it. Um, but I don't see anything about a, yeah, a first or second edition printing. And so that's nice because it makes just, yeah, this is just as valuable because I think they just reprinted it. Um, so if it had been a second edition, it'd be less. So within this book, I'm not going to flip through everything because, again, you should buy the book. And as always, through the book looks here, I don't want to show you every single page of a book so that you, um, you know, don't get an opportunity uh, to, you know, purchase the book yourself and see what it looks like yourself. Uh, so I'm going to show you a little page just so this is like the original uh, prototype of one of the turtles that... Yeah, they essentially brought around a pitch to licensing company to set what this Ninja Turtle thing was. So they go all the way to the back and yeah, to the comic book stuff throughout some of the original pages and concept art. And there's even a letter here, the male action figure line, bad guy character. It's a type sheet listing several ideas for bad guys. And so they even have some of the um, documents that were, you know, kind of provided uh, internally within the companies to produce it stuff. It's like an original concept for Bebop. And that's that's really killer. That's really killer. And so within this book, there's a lot of this type of stuff. So we're going to skip through a couple things and just see what we can see. Looks like this is a playset that possibly wasn't produced inside the face character, Supernatural Guide for the Turtles. The face was abandoned. So it felt too much like a deity. Yeah, yeah, I don't remember that at all. There's some play sets that weren't actually produced yeah, within the book. Um, oh, wow. You know what Scale Tail is? Scale Tail is a very rare, well, not very rare, but it's one of the higher end uh, figures. Um, and then here is a scratch concept art. And so that's just like a clay model. And there's the Scratch concept. Now, scratch is one of the most expensive characters. Um, as the TMT started to decline over the years, like it went from like here and then it started to kind of go down, 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 down. And when they got to like 94, 95, stuff like that, um, it ended up being, you know, those those figures were not purchased as much. And so uh, they kind of went away and there were less of them involved. So, uh... oh, look, here's a prototype. There's a prototype. <laughs> okay. Here's the thing, I just looked up at the camera and I noticed that we have no battery left. And so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna turn this off so we don't lose this footage and it's not corrupt. And we'll be back in just like two seconds. Has it been two seconds? I wouldn't even know. <laughs> I believe it has been. So we're back on this page. Again, the camera, I didn't want to crap out right in the middle of me going through this stuff. Um, uh, and so here's a prototype of the Rock Seti action figure. There's also a Bebop there. Uh, so it's kind of cool seeing some of the prototype stuff. Uh, uh, yeah, how they sort of like did, um, you know, the basic setup for it. And then they have like first production runs where they'll kind of run a blank uh, first run of the figure. Um, there's a lot of, the, I love the concept stuff. Like here's Baxter Stockman. Yeah, the original concept, and then, yeah, sort of the first kind of run, and then how it actually turned out in the end. They got some really 
cool way. Second year prototypes are about as scarce as their 1998 counterparts. Here's a hard copy paint master of Baxter Stockman. As a, and alternate pots so earlier head sculpt with different details around the mouth sculpt. Wow, so yeah, there's so much detail. I can't wait to look through this book just page by page. I'm right now, I'm kind of, I'm getting excited. I want to just go page by page. <laughs> um, but they actually run through the different years. So it's broken up in 1989, 1990. Yeah, you can see in the corner here, they list uh, yeah, the year. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Toilet tax, see Technodrome, Technodrome and the 11 inch uh, Android Krang, which I'm going to flip through, see if I can find real quick. And yeah, those are the two that got me, yeah, that got me involved in collecting the TMNT again. I just, I saw him as I was flipping around before. I'm probably missing him here. I'm trying to find him. You know what the 11 inch Angro Krang looks like, or else you haven't been watching my channel enough. Yeah, okay. oh, there it is. Yeah, so the Technodrome and the Krang were the two things that got me, and yeah, that got me back involved with collecting Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Where is he now? I just, I just lost him again. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Wow, beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, oh my god. See, I never saw this version. So it's a design sketch for Krang, an unpainted copy, and one of the most ever, amazing ever uh, prototypes discovered. Here's an Android Krang, uh, Android Krang Paint Master. It featured removable hands that could be replaced with a claw. Oh, yeah, that is so cool. Yeah, uh, I didn't know that. They have regular hands and then these two that are interchangeable. And the um, the five inch, or the six inch figure rather, yeah, no, it's five inch. The five inch figure had some uh, yeah, the different accessories, like this, like a claw accessory, but not for the hands. So it's so cool. That it's so cool. And there's some more prototypes. Here's some of like the molds and stuff to see how they made the different um, molds of the accessories and the weapons and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just go through. Here's more some merchandise type stuff. So they made some uh, they made some like uh, team and T balls that you could throw around. And then like here is the 1992. It's the beginning of this 1992 section. They list every one of the figures and which line it was in, and uh, and everything about them. Got April, Wild West. This was never made, I don't think, was it? Yeah, that uh, that's a cave. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. First image of the plate set in completed form. Styrene. So next few pages, the secret of the ooze movie. Yeah, uh, okay. So I don't remember it seeing like so. This must not have been, uh, yeah, yeah uh, produced. Charles, I'm an idiot. No, I don't remember remember having that. Oh well, there's a plate set right there. Oh, that must be a test one. Yeah, okay. So they were going to make this and just maybe never did. See, this is why I got to read the individual stuff in the book so I can learn more about it. Wow. Here's the Toon series. Uh, these are quite um, these are quite expensive <laughs> as far as now, like the Menton card stuff. But look how many different versions they made of it. And they did so many first uh, first shots um, to see what it would look like. That uh, And they came out in all different sorts of fashions. That's crazy. Oh, this little dude, that's an expensive thing here. This uh this uh news channel six news van. Boy, that's a that's a hard one to find. And again, as you went along the ninety three stuff, you know, turtles like were big in eighty eight, eighty nine, ninety, and then it just like you know, there was a little bit of waning and it kinda of went down. So these toys weren't as much purchase, and because they were at least less popular, they ended up being more scarce and then now they're worth more. So and this is probably the one of the most, um, yeah, most expensive of the carded figures are these yeah, undercover turtles, and they don't even have an image of it here uh, of the thing. But it's a uh, the the card itself was like neat, and when you have them on there, they have cloth coats on, and man, they go for two three grand a piece. Some of those, yeah, it's uh, yeah, absolutely insane. Sewer War Cat, yeah, what the hell? It's like a Master of the Universe like copycat. <laughs> Yeah, and so it goes through, here's 94, and here's some stuff that gets a little bit eh, further than what I know. There it is! There's my guy, ladies and gentlemen. Look at him. Look at this. This is a prototype. Yeah, it's a prototype of Grizz, uh, not Grizzlor, but it's a prototype of um, Razor. One second, one second. I got so many bins around. I made this. I made a custom of this figure <laughs> i went and took a grizzler and i took its skin off and put it back on and then put the chest plate on so i have one that's like this <laughs> yeah that is one that i actually made a custom of it's the only custom i've ever made it's nothing special 
Why can't I find it? The immediate time I want to find it, it's not here. Hey, I've got it around all the time, except the one moment during a video I need. If I can find it, I will uh, hey, try to put it up and see if I can put it in another video. Anyway, so look at this. So there's some merchandise getting into some of the newer years. And 1999 question mark? They don't even know. <laughs> hey, they don't even know what in the world is this. Hey, it's an E.T. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. <laughs> Hey, Donatello, E.T. the Extra Treasure. Other ideas are Doctor Who, Judge Dredd, and hey, also it's, uh, uh, considered. Uh, wow. See, these are, this is all new to me. Doctor Who. Uh, yeah, TMNT. That, that is crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. All right. So this is a cool stinking book. I absolutely love it. Everything about it is superb and brilliant. And I cannot speak highly enough. The details that are in here, the stuff I don't know about, the stuff that I've never seen before, I can't wait to crack this open and go page by page by page. Super excited to have this in my book collection. I've been waiting a long time for this rad plastic book. It has been forever of a wait because I remember I missed out on the first uh, printing edition of it and I thought uh, it's on the secondary market it was kind of expensive I didn't know if I would ever get it and uh, the ones I found were just it was kind of outrageous and I was like nah I'm not gonna but anyway I ended up uh, contacting the author of the book and he kind of put me on a waiting list for the next uh, edition of it and I just think this book is fabulous it's got vibrant images it covers a lot of the history it has a lot of the fun behind the scenes -y stuff like the prototypes and things like that I just think it is a wealth of knowledge for the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle collector and if you do not have a TMNT collection, um, but you want kind of a mini collection that you can pop on a shelf or on your coffee table, this is the book for you. This is the one that kind of, it's a collection in a book. <laughs> you can have this and you can feel as though you've got your own collection without spending a lot of the extra money, etc. So I think it's a super uh, book. Hopefully you are able to get your hands on a copy. If you're not able to, make sure you get on the waiting list or look for the third, fourth, fifth edition. I'm sure they're going to have this book for years to come because it is just so well done. I can't I can't wait to show it off to people that come to my house and I'm going to have it prominently displayed with my other team and T collectibles and so it's going to really be a good fit for that. Thanks for watching the Pop Art Hunter channel. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and hopefully you like our other videos. Look at the stuff we offer. We have animation cells. We have book looks like this one but we also have Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. We have custom figures. We have uh, you know the animation cells, movie posters and, and all sorts of other stuff. Concept art etc. So take a look at all those videos. Like, comment, subscribe, all those sorts of things and we will see you next time right here on the Pop Art Hunter channel. Thank <laughs> you.